So uh, we'll go ahead and start. Usually I have a bunch of five, 10 minutes of updates. You know, there's a lot going on in the industry right now, obviously with uh, interest rates and, and dealer fees increasing left and right and shortages <clears throat> and uh, NEM3 and all that jazz. But uh, I'm just probably just going to hand it off <laughs> to, uh, to Mr. McCarthy here and just let him just kind of just run for the next, I don't know, however long he wants to take. And uh, at the end, if we have time, maybe we'll go over a few updates that will be coming in. But Taylor, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just pass it off to you, brother. All right, cool. Well, thank you all for having me. You know, I'm very grateful to share the time that we both have. You know, I want to really start off by, you know, making my intense statement to let you guys know we each have a challenge today. Uh, I have the challenge to be able to give you these aha moments where the light bulb goes off in your mind. And you have the challenge of actually utilizing the greatest computer ever, which is this program right up here, and actually dial it in. Because there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to tell you right now, which will give you aha moments to create shortcuts with your trajectory as far as being solar professionals. I got involved with solar in 2014. I got involved with door-to-door -door selling in 2008. I was a senior in high school. I skipped my last class. I had a 1.8 GPA, and I just realized decisions would decide my wealth at a very young age. So what I'm going to start off with training is I'm going to teach you something called the four bones of an organization. And then I'm going to go into a couple of questions that I have for you guys. Um, I'm going to ask you to pay attention because you guys are going to be playing a game right now where I'm going to actually send uh, three people my entire presentation. This has my entire presentation word for word, um, every single step in the word for word presentation. Um, to see who actually is paying the most attention uh, during today's training. So let's go into the four bones of an organization. And I'm going to start by asking you a question. Are you the spectator or are you the participant? Are you interested or are you committed? Are you the example for your organization or are you the warning? You see, there's four bones within every organization. You've got the jawbone. The jawbone likes to talk about it all day, right? I'm going to rip 30 this month. I'm going to be the top salesman in the company, right? But he's all talk. He's the jawbone. You've got the wishbone, right? The wishbone is like studying. They want to be successful, but it all comes down to executing. Are they actually executing? That's the wishbone of the organization. The third bone is going to be the knuckle bone. The knuckle bone was the guy that was invited to today's call but he decided to say, hey, I got to go beat this game at Call of Duty. And that's more important to me, right? Those are the knuckle bones within the organization. And then you have the backbones, right? The backbones that are willing to get it done. You know, like I said, you're either the spectator or you're the participant. Your actions speak so loudly, I cannot even hear what you're saying, right? It's because the actions, first comes the action, then you become motivated with what you're doing. You see, when I was 24 years old, um, I had my mentor call me, and his name is Tom Hopkins. Tom Hopkins wrote a book called How to Master the Art of Selling, and he sold millions of copies. And when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I was completely myopic, right? I didn't care about anything. I'd go home and I'd listen to my 30 gig iPod that I got off piratebay.org, and I have you know thousands of hours of sales audio, and that was my university. You see, when I first met Tom, he asked me to speak at one of his seminars in California. And when I first sat down with him, I said, what are the best three pieces of advice that you would give me? And when he explained these three things to me, they were just light bulbs that turned on in my mind where I was realizing that all these little nuggets are going to add up to be able to create who I am today. And what he told me, the first thing was he said, do what you fear most. Right, Because he said a lot of the time you're not going to accomplish things that are in your comfort zone. You have to be uncomfortable being you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So doing what you fear most, you know, for some of you guys, you guys might have never, ever knocked a door ever, you know, and you're getting into the solar industry and you're trying to look for leads in all these different avenues. When realistically, like your first day out there knocking on the doors, you're supposed to get your face kicked in. You're supposed to have people yell at you. Um, you know, people are going to tell you they're not interested. And, you know, the conversations that I have with myself are the most important. So do what you fear most. Number two, he said, we must do the most productive thing possible at every given moment. 
this is such a nugget that I think about all the time where it's like, if I'm not moving in the direction that I want to move, I just ask myself that question, Taylor, am I doing the most productive thing possible at this given moment? If I'm not doing the most productive thing possible at that given moment, it's not going to help me get into the direction I want to go. And the third thing that he told me was the best piece of advice that I've ever received in my entire life. What he told me was he learned this from his mentor. His mentor was a guy named J. Douglas Edwards. J. Douglas Edwards was known as the father of modern day selling. He teaches the reason there's so many peons and the reason there's so much mediocrity in selling is because people only know one or two ways to transition, one or two ways to close, one or two ways to deal with I'm not interested, one or two ways to deal with, hey, leave me with the proposal, give me a couple of days to think about it. So Mr. Edwards traveled by coach bus. He would present on stage and he'd travel city to city. He's up on stage absolutely ripping. And if you hear the way this guy uses energy, he speaks very loud and uses his tonality, his voice inflection, his voice. And the thing about Mr. Edwards was he was on his 75th seminar in 80 days. And Tom was in the room in the back of the room and Mr. Edwards passes out on stage. They pull him on a stretcher. They load him up onto an ambulance. Mr. Hopkins grabs a cab. He said, follow that ambulance to the hospital. Finally gets to the hospital, waiting outside the waiting room, finally goes inside. And he asked Mr. Edwards a question. He said, Mr. Edwards, why do you give so much? And the response that he gave to Tom, and when Tom told me this, there was this light bulbs that went off in my mind. He said, the reason why I give so much is because I always want to give people way more than they expect. The reason that he gave so much was because he wanted to always give others way more than they expected. Okay, whether that's the families that you serve, whether that's your family, whether that's something in your life, I think that's great advice to be able to give others more than they expect because if you go above and beyond for others, people tend to go above and beyond for you. So that's how I wanted to start off today's training um, to kind of break it down. But I wanna go into my actual presentation. I wanna break it down to the ridiculous for you guys and uh, share a couple things you know, that really helped me within the process. So as far as selling door to door, understand that you guys have two strikes against you. In the first 30 seconds of my presentation, one of the most important things that I focus on is creating curiosity. What you have to understand is they are never going to be interested if they are not curious. If I can create the curiosity at the beginning, being interesting and unique, they've never talked to anybody like me before. They, I don't care if they've talked to 25, 30 people about solar before. That doesn't make a difference to me because what I'm doing is completely different. You see, before I got into sales, I was 15, 16 years old, and I watched my parents struggle. My parents got divorced, and I was a golf caddy. I used to carry around golf bags uh, for a living when I was 15, 16 years old. I'd work on the weekend. I'd get $40 to $50 a bag. I'd usually carry two bags at the same time. I'd do two rounds a day if I could. It would be about a $200 weekend for a 15-year-old. You see, what I needed to do is I needed to mirror and match the golfer. The way that I would mirror and match them would help them with the way they played the game. And the better they played the game, the more money that I would get at the end of the round. And it's the same thing with door to door sales. I have to mirror and match people, talk to them the way they want to be talked to. If somebody came and knocked on my door, what would they need to say to me if I was watching the Patriots game or I was in the middle of watching something or I was cooking dinner to create curiosity to find the excuse for me to say yes? because every single buyer has the obligatory right to tell you no. They have the excuse to tell you no until you answer their lingering questions, until you explain the benefits, the timing. You see their psychology behind why people say yes. You are the product and service, your excitement and enthusiasm, write this down. Enthusiasm is 51% of your entire sales presentation. And then service, genuinely trying to service people. You see that people with the most energy have the, make the most money. And the enthusiasm is defined by the spirit that we have within us. You see, I'm a little bit different from every other door-to-door -door sales professional. And that's the way that I envision myself. So I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Who was your favorite boxer of all time? Who's the first name that comes to somebody's mind? 
Pacquiao, baby. Pacquiao. Mac, all right, we got Pacquiao. Okay, Pacquiao. Question for you. When Pacquiao's in his prime, how does Pacquiao envision himself when he's walking into that ring? Well, of course, he's envisioning himself as the winner. He's, he's totally envisioning right. himself as the winner before the fight even starts. He's in the sure. press conference like, dude, double bet on me because I'm going to win. He knows he's going to win before he even starts. You see a salesman is first off a man that can sell himself to himself or a sales professional or a saleswoman is a woman that can sell herself to herself. What do you guys think I mean by that? A salesman is first off a man that can sell himself to himself. Got to believe in yourself. Conviction. It's the belief in the conviction that you have before you even start. You see, but the problem with this instruction is you go out to the field where something doesn't happen the way that you want it to happen and you start beating yourself up. Why does every practicing professional spend so much money on a reception area? Why would a dentist spend 50 grand on his reception area? To make an impression. To make an impression, right? Because it builds belief. What is a salesman's reception area? It's himself. So what happens so many times is you guys are kicking over the furniture in your reception area three hours into the day when you didn't have any good looks. I no, Not everybody tells me yes either. But what happens is I clench my jaw instead of allowing it to drop. I'm out there for 45 minutes. I don't have a sale. I say, guess what? Next one's a deal. I'm going to give theirs to their neighbor. Right there. This is a perfect house. This would be ridiculous for them not to do it. I have a perfect presentation. I'm not sitting there like, oh, this is bad turf. They had somebody knock here last week. They're not interested. Started to feel sorry for myself. No. What happens is I double down on myself. Dude, that was a sick presentation, Taylor. Perfect, bro. Keep that up. Great tonality, voice inflection. Next person's definitely going to do it. They have a perfect group for this. There's no way they would want to just waste their money and throw it away to the utility company. And I'm saying these words to myself as I'm producing uh, more and more accounts and as I'm producing the transactions. You have to have a demeanor. This is going to happen with or without you. If you want to be a part of it, great. That's why I'm here. I don't care what you do. If you want to be a part of this, awesome. I do seven to 10 of these a day. That's what my mindset is. And, you know, if people want to take advantage of it, great. So let me ask you a question. What is a salesperson? If I was to ask you that question, what is a salesperson to a random person at the mall, what would they say? Like a random person, I was just asked the general consensus. Hey, what is a salesperson? What's the answer that most people are going to define salespeople as? Somebody wants to get you like money. Willie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. What are some other ways that they would define a salesperson? In society, it's just a salesperson are seen bad as a, you know, greedy people, you know, they're after my money. They want to take advantage of me. Yep. They just want to sell me whatever. They'll lie to me. Now, how would you define what a salesperson is? I bring value to the table. You bring value to the table. I bring, I come here with a, with a value proposition that they'll be stupid not to hear what I have to say. You see, here's the thing. We should have never been called salespeople at the beginning. We should have been called servants. You know, when people start giving me a hard time on the doors, I'm like, sir, this isn't a sales process. It's a service. You're actually starting to make me feel a little uncomfortable. Right. And then the next thing you know is they're, oh, OK, you know, like it, it doesn't matter. Right. If I don't end up utilizing them as somebody that I'm in a service, they're stuck with something that's worse than what I offer. I have the competitive advantage every single time. I have all these people messaging me NEM 3.0. It's NEM 3.0 is still better than throwing your money away to the utility company. You know, for everybody in California, every single time I've gone there, I'm cutting people's bills almost in half compared to in some areas where they have to pay $70, $80 additional a month, which is still worth it because they own something. They have an asset instead of a liability. They own something instead of rent it. They consume it instead of produce. They're uh, producing it instead of consuming it. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is the top sales professionals in any industry, 
they shine with something we call conviction. They have an absolute catching belief about themselves. Back in the day, in the 1930s, they used to name the levels of a sales professional. And at the very top, they used to identify these individuals as stone cold trappers. OK, that was known as the guy that just doubled up on everyone. Right. The number one person, the one that always won the competitions. That was the stone cold trapper. Under the stone cold trapper was the master closer. The master closer was known as the king or queen of selling. Under the master closer was the closer. Under the closer was the dealsman. Under the dealsman was the salesman. Under the salesman was the order taker, which I always thought was the lowest level of a sales professional, but they actually had one level lower than the order taker. And they used to call them tour guides, right? Because they're just going out there giving away information, but not closing any of these transactions. So this is what I focus on in the first 30 seconds of my presentation. Literally, how I start my presentation is always like this. Oh, hey, sir, how are you? Uh, hey, my name is Taylor McCarthy. Actually, the reason I'm coming by is like a little bit different. I'll pretty much cut to the chase. I'm going to give you the short version, and then I go into it. But that little line at the beginning, the reason I'm coming by is like a little bit different. I'll pretty much cut to the chase. I'll give you the short version. And then I put something in their hand, and I break down uh, specific slicks that I use to be able to create this decision. And I typically like to start off with some sort of local information tied to the market on a current situation, because what you need to understand is the utility bill is like a pebble in their shoe. How many of you guys, by a show of hands, have ever had a pebble in your shoe and decided to continue walking with it? Because you didn't want to deal with the inconvenience of untying your shoe, taking your shoe off, dumping it out, and then putting it back on and tying it back up. You see, this is what's happening. The families that you're serving, right? Notice I don't call them customers. I call them the families that I serve. They have a pebble in their shoe. And if there will, if there's not any pain, there will never be a change. This $150 electric bill is not taking food off their table. They get it and they pay it. They, it's been something normal for years. But what happened if I told you that pebble in your shoe was now a glass shard? And the next step that you took, it was going to break your skin. That's what it is. If there's no pain, there's no change. How can we turn this pebble in somebody's shoe into a glass shard where they realize that they need to create this decision? They understand they're going to find the excuse to tell you yes. You see, the top sales professionals, they don't start when they hear their first no. The first time they give me an objection, I always bypass it. Typically, the first objection I hear, I say, yeah, that's the thing. And I just keep going with my presentation. If I hear it again, I'll listen, I'll acknowledge, I'll clarify, I'll explain. It's called the lace technique. But like I was explaining to you with Jay Douglas Edwards, he said the reason there's so much mediocrity is people only know one or two ways to close a sale. People don't know the difference between an instant reverse close, a secondary question close, a triplicate of choice close, uh, a tie down, a takeaway why we don't use the word uh, contract, why we should use the word agreement, why we shouldn't use the word appointment, why we should use the word pop by and visit, why we shouldn't use the word uh, uh, like contract is agreement. People don't wanna buy anything they want to own, right? They, they want to see the form, they don't wanna see the contract. They don't wanna uh, sign anything, they'll be okay with okaying it though. So vocabulary, all this kind of stuff makes you better as a sales professional. And then understand a lot of this is mental. The things that I think about, this is how I get sales. If you guys want me to just give you the shortcut, eager, easy, what it is, this is what it is. I think certain things in my head that leads to an emotion that will make me feel a certain way. I start to talk and that teleports my energy out of my body. So what happens is I'm thinking this is a deal. They're going to definitely go solar. This would be ridiculous for them not to do it. I start thinking that the words come out. It creates an emotion. It makes me feel a certain way. I start judging myself and what's going to happen. And then a decision is made. You see, I'm an assistant buyer too. I actually take their hand and lead them through this process. Now, if I have so much control of my thoughts, words, emotions, feeling, judgment, and decision, that energy just teleports out of my body when I go and knock on the door. Okay, they start to think something. 
words come out of their mouth. They feel a certain way. They judge me, my product, and my service, and then they're going to make a decision. You see, I'm going to help lead to them to that decision that is truly a win-win. And the way that I do that is I visualize what I want, and then I verbalize it. You see, Muhammad Ali says, I'm humble at home, but I'm not humble in the ring. He knew that he was going to win the fight before he even started. You want to go out and rip it in 2023, go sit down with your significant other, go sit down with your support system and say, hey, this is the year we're going to make it. This is going to be 12 to 24 months of dedicated sacrifice. But what we're going to be able to do is set up the next 20 to 30 years of our life, because you guys are in an industry uh, with solar that's just untapped. It's so many people are going to become millionaires. It just comes down to whether or not you're willing to develop your skills and abilities to reflect that income. And this is the way that I would break it down. Like I asked you guys at the beginning, you're either the spectator or you're the participant. Your actions speak so loudly, I cannot even hear what you're saying. And it starts with you having a deep down desire. It starts with you having the deep down ardent desire and dreams. And that's not only your why, but it's your who. If you have developed a desire on why you're doing this and who you're doing it for, it's going to create discipline. You will never have the discipline if you don't have a deep enough why or who. For years when I was selling, I always knew that I was going to be the number one sales professional. I always knew that I was going to end up with the trophy at the end. It's because I had a deeper who than these guys. My dad, he's always had health conditions. He raised me. I saw him get down to his last 20 bucks every week. And I said, hey, I'm going to make my dad proud. I'm an 18-year-old kid from Pepperell, Massachusetts. I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm competing against people all over the United States. And I said to myself, losing is not an option. And that's what allowed me to have the discipline on times when it was tough. If you can develop the discipline, it will lead to you demonstrating. When you can demonstrate something, that's you executing. You're going to E or F. You either execute or you fold. 95% of people are non-achievers. Only 5% of people actually achieve things they say they're going to do. So you'll never be able to demonstrate if you don't have discipline. You're not going to have the discipline if you don't have the desire. The demonstration is going to lead to documentation. That's your story. Understand this. Nobody wants to be recruited. Nobody wants to be recruited. But people do want to be impressed. And to impress other people, you have to be impressive. If you document, you have a story, people are going to start asking, hey, I noticed that you guys are with the solar company now. How do I get involved with that? Right, because you impress them. And when you impress somebody, you duplicate, and that's your impact. And that duplication will lead to disappearing, moving up, and moving to the next level. But you're never going to disappear and move into a manager or go into a vice president role if you never actually accomplish the five steps beforehand. And this breaks down the six Ds of really being able to get the immediate results. And you know, keep in mind, I'm exposing you to this information, but this is one of the most powerful formulas that if you program it up here. It's literally the roadmap on how you're going to be able to scale your business in 2023. Technique is the words that come out of your mouth. 55% is body language, the tonality, and then just 7% is the actual words that I say. People react to the range of my voice, the volume, the pace, and the diction, even when they don't understand the words. So it's that energy that I carry uh, the first time that I make the original contact and I speak with them. I want to be dynamic and I want to create the curiosity throughout the process. So that breaks down the six D's of scaling your business. Um, we've went over what a salesperson is. Now, there's five main steps to being able to learn something or to be able to teach it. I want to skip this part, but I want you to be able to read it. Um, you got to be aware and alert. Repetition. You have to hear, read, write, and say something six times to get 62% of the retention. You have to utilize something, consciously making yourself use the techniques. You internalize something so it becomes a natural part of you, and then you reinforce it, okay? So to break that down, there's five steps to learning and teaching. You're teaching people solar every single day. You're learning right now. The first step is being aware and alert. If you're checking your Facebook, I'm going to tell you right now, stop checking your Facebook and start facing your checkbook, okay? When you actually repeat something enough, then you start to utilize it. 
Once you utilize something enough, then it becomes the natural part of you and you internalize it. And once you internalize something enough, then you can actually reinforce it. It becomes you. So this is how you get better. You want to know? It's practice. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect makes uh, perfect. So practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. Who said that for a free deck of cards? Who knows who said that? Okay. Wayne Gretzky. Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. Who said it? Jamie Krauss. All right. You got to uh, send me your address. I'm going to send you a deck of my entire presentation word for word. Vince Lombardi. Yes, said that. Uh, but, but yeah, practice doesn't make perfect. If you're out there using the wrong presentation or you have the wrong tonality, like you need to be able to find a mentor. You got to be able to find somebody that has walked the walk to be able to show you these ways. So the practice leads to certainty. The certainty leads to confidence. The confidence leads to results. The results leads to growth. The growth leads to who you become. Practice will lead to certainty. Certainty leads to confidence. The confidence leads to results. The results leads to growth. The growth leads to who you become. There's no neutral. Your life is like a stock. You guys will get better or worse throughout the process. When I was traveling this summer, I was fortunate enough to complete 43 transactions. 30 of them were self-generated where I knocked and closed. I was 28 days and I was in 20 different markets. So this was one of the greatest feats that I had as far as in my solar career, because this was a lot tougher than the month where I did 60 or 50 something accounts just in one market. But the way I was able to do this was these were the lessons that I learned during those 43 or during those uh, 28 days on the road uh 43 deals obviously i had travel days but these are the 12 most important nuggets i'm going to share with you guys right now next to the word success is sacrifice i've been living out of suitcases for a decade right i i i used to sleep in my shirt and badge all i cared about was the scoreboard i was emotionally unavailable i was completely myopic and eyes on the prize on the things that i need to accomplish and next to the word success is sacrifice. First comes the action, then comes the motivation. The scariest thing in business is a lack of momentum. You take action and then you become motivated. Sometimes you need to verbalize the things to take action. Hey, I'm going to do this. Hey, 20 people now know that I'm committed to do it. It's going to hold me accountable. Have fun. If you're not having fun, it's not worth it. The harder that I worked, the luckier I got. I joked around and said, I don't know if it's because I'm a McCarthy and I'm Irish and I just keep walking into the laydowns, but the harder that I worked, the luckier that I got. You see, when you maintain anything, it will become exhausting. When you build something, it will become energizing. And the secret ingredient with building is making sure you're having fun along the process. If you're not having fun, it's not even worth it. You see, when you procrastinate, on things that you need to do what you're doing get ready when you procrastinate you're ruining your future you're avoiding the present and you're living in the past that's what procrastination is broken down to the ridiculous we're ruining our future we're avoiding the present and we're living in the past we get energy from yeses you see, I'm out on this blitz in Denver. I'm like five, six hours. It's like seven, eight thirty at night. And they're like, oh, your next group of five is coming to shadow you. I'm like, dude, I'm exhausted. And I was like, whatever, I'm just going to get out of the car. We're on a dirt road. Got an appointment, collected the bill, went across the street, collected another bill, went to the neighbor, collected another bill, got another one, went to the people. Now I'm five doors, five bills in front of one of the top people in the whole industry. This kid ripped 68 deals in a month. His name's Kevin Mize. And I'm like, okay, Kevin's with me. I'm gonna, he, he's, Kevin's really good. I'm gonna show him a little of the sauce. And I had five in a row. And now it's 9.30 at night. And five doors before that, I told myself I was exhausted. I was never tired. I was lying to myself the entire time. After those five bills, I'm like, dude, where's the sixth? It's pitch black. I had more energy than I had the entire blitz is because I got my energy from the word yes. The next level of teaching sales is performing sales, right? We could talk about it all day, but that's why I bring the video camera onto the field, on the doors, in the house, uh, because anyone can talk about selling, but are they actually performing or did they perform years ago? 
we get better or worse there's no neutral within that process currency is relationships temporary imbalance is how we get ahead I struggle with that a lot where I was like dude am I giving up a lot in my 20s or am I just like all I do is live eat and sleep selling uh but no this is my hobby this is my career I enjoy doing this you know hey gotta hop on a training at 9 p.m I'm not looking down like crap I have to do this sweet I get to try to make an impact and if I make an impact on one of you guys it was worth it personalizing the opportunity to the location you see when I work in Florida I have a slick from the governor I literally have the governor that vetoed a bill that was going to raise the rates literally states it's worse inflation in 40 years escalating bills Florida should not contribute to the financial crunch that our citizens are experiencing I have so much conviction when I knock on somebody's door and I put this in their hand hey I don't know if you know who DeSantis is this has nothing to do with politics I know it's a heartbreaker I know you guys really wanted to talk maybe about religion or something like that today I'm just kidding man uh it is serious we're not trying to come down on anybody however it is important and I can show them a veto from the governor that does not support the utility companies raising their rates I just have a deep down belief on why this is always going to make sense for somebody to go solar and the first person you got to sell is yourself you have to play a game out there and you pay attention to the scoreboard you see in 16 years of selling door to door I have not worked one day in my life what I have done though is I have been a professional trick-or-treater I trick-or-treat for free money right that's all I do I'm just trick-or-treating I just go exercise and make friends I look at a roof and I say that's a seven thousand dollar lottery ticket if I actually use my words correctly I'll scratch it correct and I win seven thousand dollars so it's just a game that I play and then you have to pay attention to the scoreboard along the process so if I was to ask you guys what closing is what would you define closing as what would you say is the definition of closing success success okay I know I've been going for a little bit are you guys getting some value out of this or am I just ranting at this point absolutely yeah this okay is cool keep it coming, cool. Keep it coming. This is fire man keep going cool so cl closing. closing is the transition of, of uh changing someone's perspective or bringing them into the light of what you're trying to present to them okay if, I'm going to break this down to the ridiculous for you closing equals creating the decision that's creating the decision is closing you know what a job of a good manager is how I would define a sales manager a sales manager's job is to sell salesmen on selling the job of a good manager defined role is selling salesmen on selling but closing is creating the actual decision the definition of closing is professionally using people's desire to own the benefits of your product then blending your sincere desire to serve and helping them make decisions that are truly good for them no single close will ever give you a close okay somebody else tell me their favorite boxer Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard. So Doug, Sugar Ray Leonard, when Sugar Ray walked into the ring, did Sugar Ray hear the bell throw one big haymaker and the fight was over? Or did Sugar Ray set up combinations? He was combination. Combinations. He, yeah. And that's the same way that we close. We close with combinations. And if you add up all these excuses for them to say yes. I'm sitting there like Yukon Cornelius with my pickaxe and I'm working my way to actually, you know, bring down this big iceberg and find the excuse for them to actually create this decision. People buy emotionally and then they actually defend the decision with logic. Okay. I use that as a line, sir. I can take all the emotion out of this. If we made this a thousand percent logical, you would do it, wouldn't you? You see, that's called a tie down. There's three forms of tie downs. There's the tie down, there's the inverted tie down, and then there's the tie down tag on. A, 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 is the wouldn't it, couldn't it, shouldn't it, isn't it? A tie down is a question at the end of a sentence that demands a yes. So wouldn't it make sense if we could save you money on a bill that you weren't gonna cancel? That's considered an inverted tie down. 
If you were able to save money on a bill that you weren't going to cancel, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? That's considered a tie down, right? You see how I took the wouldn't it? I put it at the beginning of the statement for more warmth. This is getting more technical, all right? And going back to what Jay Douglas Edwards says, the reason there's so much mediocrity is people just don't understand or decide to add this to their bag. So how do we create this emotional climate to create the decision to close? What I'm gonna break down for you guys is the actual steps that I go through for my entire presentation from the beginning to the end. And I think one of the best things that I've ever heard is clarity is what's going to create conviction. All right, you're, not, you're never gonna be uh, convinced on something. Uh, where do we go? All right, here it is. All right, so you're never going to be convinced on anything unless you have the clarity of what you're doing. So the first step of my sales presentation is affirmation. And this is exactly what these cards are. Um, so uh, the person that, you know, guessed the right first question, you're going to get a deck of these. And I'm going to do a couple of trivia questions at the end. But these are the steps of my exact process. I want to leave a little time for Q&A. So I'm going to go through this fast but it's affirmation. This is a done deal. They were talking about this would be ridiculous for them not to go solar. They're definitely saying yes. That's the first thing that's going through my mind. Then I start off my presentation. Goes like this. Oh, hey, sir. How are you? Uh, hey, my name is Taylor McCarthy. Uh, actually, the reason I'm coming by is like a little bit different. I'll pretty much cut to the chase. I'm going to give you the short version. I don't know if you know, right? That's when I go into telling the story and creating the pain. But that little short paragraph at the beginning is going to buy me the time and command the attention that I need. You see, there's one technique that's more powerful than any other technique in all of selling. And I want you to start thinking about that because I'm going to ask you that question here in a couple minutes. There's one technique more powerful than any other technique in all of selling. When you lose this, you lose the involvement. You, you, you lose the objections, you lose the pace, you lose everything when you lose this. So I don't know if you know, right? And then I'm going into one of these stories, right? Hey, I don't know if you knew what happened. Last week I was in New Mexico and, you know, JP Morgan, the bank bought the utility company for $4.3 billion. They did not do that to lower their rates. Their first year in business, they profited $146 million, which was an 87% increase. I was like, I'm sick and tired of this. People are putting one and one together and they're, they're done with the utility nickel and diming us and I'm done with it too. That's the way I was presenting to the families. And now they're like, yeah, I'm sick of it too. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, did you guys get the heart attack bill last month? Wait a second, it was 200? No way, that must be quarterly, right? And I need to build that pain and I do that with this ammunition right here, okay? If you don't have a do not pay electric bill, go get one. If you don't know how to cover the six main questions of lingering questions, if you don't have a picture between the old stuff compared to the new stuff, comparing option A, which is the mercy of the power company, and option B is energy independence. Option C is the utility company denies their application and then they're stuck. All I do is I put a line down the middle of a piece of paper and I show them apples to apples, both situations. The only way they're going to continue with the utility company is if they want to justify throwing away their money in a trash can. Then I fill out this chart with them. The left side's what they have. The right side's the new situation. I go over these questions to determine whether or not they're a good fit for us. These are the 10 pillars of reasons people go solar. I'm comparing everything apples to apples for them. I'm showing them the percentage of rate increases that have happened over time. I'm showing them the potential savings that they could have. I'm showing them what their bill is going to be over time. I'm showing them what increases are. I'm showing them the roadmap of what's going to happen during the close. I show them the questions and the 10 pillars of going solar. You know, I should explain how net metering works. I've just got way too many excuses for these people to do it. And that's where the sales come from a lot of the time. I'm not like crazy technical knowledge or anything like that. You know, I know I know most about solar, but there's people that know a lot more about solar than I do. The cells, the PV, the, all the kind of stuff, right? The type of inverters, what this does, what that does. Well, guess what? The sales professional that has a deep down belief and conviction with the product and service is going to outsell the guy with technical skills seven days of the week. So that story that I go into needs to create the pain. Like I was explaining to you, a pebble in a shoe that needs to turn into a glass shard. If there's no problem, they're never going to care about having a solution. 
the solution is how they would be potentially involved, how they would be potentially rewarded, why this makes sense, and then I always transition. Bottom line, you guys are going to fall into one or two categories. Category one, everything that I just explained makes complete and total sense. You guys know somebody that's benefited from going solar or category two, it just sounds way too good to be true. And you're probably sitting there like, wait a second, what's the catch? The catch is simple. What's the main reason you picked national grid in the first place? Exactly. You never had a second option. So my job is very simple. All I do today are two things. One, I put together the design. It's about 90, 95% of the way completed right now. I'm just going to show you aesthetically where all the panels would be laid out. And then secondly, is I'll show you what your bill would have been last month if you would have already had solar. Do you know roughly just like ballpark what you guys spend a month for the power? Not like the heart attack one in the summer, but like the average. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to look at the meter really quick. If you can, I don't know if you do it like online or if you do it on mail, if you can pull that up real quick, I'm going to text my lead engineer. He's going to have the design finish. And then if there's just a small corner of a table, I can kind of put my stuff down and show you what it all looks like. Uh, do you mean to take off my shoes? Right. And I always want to take it as far as I can. A lot of my sales are one touch sales because I don't believe in one touch. I don't believe in two touch. I don't believe in three touch. I believe in taking the sales presentation as far as I possibly can every single time. And if I can build the most value I can, if it's not ready to be closed and they're not ready, I'll take it as far as I possibly can. And then I'll set up a time to actually, you know, rebuild the rapport, reloop and go through the close. So why this makes sense, reflex, transition, assume, and close. And the biggest step that everybody forgets as far as setters is they set the time. Hey, I'll be back tomorrow at five. See you later. And they're off to the next house. Spend three minutes talking about Notre Dame football. Spend three minutes talking about whatever they want to talk about. You need to be Taylor. You need to be Barry. You need to be Anthony at the end of that set. You can't just be the solar guy. I need to rebuild the rapport. And while I'm doing that, it's called the circle of persuasion, right? We're talking about Notre Dame football because they had a Notre Dame license plate. I asked if they ever been in South Bend. And then during the middle of that conversation, I say, and like I was mentioning, if I cannot take the money that you would have given to the utility company to actually fund this project, we are not a good fit for you. I'm going to repeat that because for some people, it sounds way too good to be true. If we cannot take the money you already give to the utility company to fund this project, we don't do it. You guys are already paying for this. We just redirect, divert, or shift the money back into you paying yourself rather than just throwing away to the utility company. That's the base of exactly what I do when I set the framework that I have, the checkpoints that if I start spacing when I'm on the doors, I know that I can just go to my steps and I can be right on the roadmap to create that decision. As far as closing, does anybody know what the greatest enemy is for the client? The greatest enemy? The greatest enemy is the client starts with an F. Failure to ask for the close. <laughs> F E. F -E. Fear. 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 Got it. The greatest enemy is the client's fear. Nobody wants to be screwed. Nobody wants to make the wrong decision. Right? Nobody wants to be put into something that they don't fully understand. So what I have is an intense statement at the very beginning. It's a comfortable get down to business statement. It anchors, it ties them down, but it also helps them relax and become comfortable. Okay. So Raphael, we're going to go through a quick little role play. You're going to be the family that I'm helping. And we're going to go through my intense statement. And you guys are going to hear exactly the way that I set up the pre-frame for the entire close. This pre-frame, an intense statement, is in more important than my entire close because what I'm doing is I'm anchoring and I'm tying down four or five things at the very beginning. Um, so, you know, we're just, it would start off with, you know, us shooting the shit like, oh man, how was your weekend, dude? Did you end up going to that game you were telling me about? Absolutely, man. It was super fun. Great time, you know, right there on center ice. It was, it was, it was a blast. Dude, and there was there was a hat trick scored, right? Somebody scored three goals in that game, right? Yeah, dude, it was amazing. You got you got to catch it. You got to see it, dude. I caught the end of it. I just uh, I'm a big sports center, you know, top ten guy. So like, I'll check like the top ten. But um, every time I go to a hockey game, I always try to sit as close to the ice because that's like one of the best, I think, sports like seats in all of sports. But yeah, man, I'm glad you had a lot of fun up there. Who's your favorite player, by the way? Oh, uh, Donovan. 
Dude, Donovan's nice, bro. That that he he can dangle those goalies nice. But sure. um Raphael, like uh first off, before I get started, I I really mm-hmm. genuinely want to thank you for the time that you're giving me. I always tell the families that I help and get involved with solar to keep this somewhat exploratory, meaning my job as a solar professional is really just to put the line down the middle of a piece of paper and really show you apples to apples both situations. Um, I always like to tell sure. people like, I'm a consumer myself. So whenever I put myself in this sort of situation, I don't want to deal with some long drawn out process, but I also want to deal with somebody that fully understands this. You know, if I don't understand it and able to explain to you this so simply, a confused mind is always going to say no. I also want to explain to you that over the course of the next 15 minutes, I want you to look for every reason this does not make sense. And if you can identify the reasons it does not make sense, Everything stays the same and you just recommit to the utility company and nothing changes. However, if we can only identify the reasons why this is going to benefit your situation, the idea is there's three specific approvals that are needed. We need the approval from the utility company. We need the approval from the engineering department and we need the approval from the town. So if we can only find the reasons why this is going to help your situation, we would be submitting those applications today. You would move to the back of the line. And as you work towards the front of the line, then we would schedule a date to have it installed. After it's installed, then it's inspected. After it's inspected, then it's turned on. Sun goes up, bills go down. So I always try to start off by that and, you know, really thank you for the time that you're giving me. Totally appreciate that. Yeah, that that, uh, seems pretty simple and straightforward. Good. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the tone before I go into this worksheet. What this worksheet I'm doing is I'm going over specific questions that will determine whether or not I pick their home. And I'm like a police officer. Anything they said that that they say, I'm going to use against them. If they're sitting there telling me, oh, it would provide me so much peace of mind having a 0% escalator. I would never go back to renting a home or I'm very vocal. I'm writing down their answers right in front of them. But the reason why that intent statement is so important is because I'm setting the agenda. I'm setting the roadmap for what's going to happen in the presentation. There is no maybes. One of three things is going to happen. Option one, they recommit back to the utility company. Nothing changes. And they continue to be at the mercy of the power company. And the utility company can continue to seize money out of their bank account. And they have to retreat. Option two is we redirect, divert, or shift everything into a piggy bank where now they take the handcuffs off and they put the utility company at the mercy of them. Or option C is if the utility company and they're all ready to go and the utility company denies their application, they're stuck. They can't even do it. Right. So I'm setting the framework for what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, you can look for every reason this does not make sense. And if you find it, just don't do it. But if we can only find the reasons why it's going to help your situation, the idea is that we are submitting everything today. So that's the intent statement. A brief recap and the explanation of benefits. Typically, the psychology behind no is lingering questions, inadequate explanation of benefits, or timing. I go over these questions to determine whether or not you guys would be a good fit for me. And the way that you answer the questions will determine that. After I go through the can we pay questions, then we go over the cost of doing nothing. We fill out their left side of this chart with their exact situation currently. Then we explain to them what I believe before I explain to you the reason why so many people have decided to go solar. I'm going to first explain to you what I believe. And the first thing I'm going to explain to you is I feel as if solar is inevitable. That's the first thing I start with. I believe that we should have the freedom of choice. I believe that we shouldn't have to pay more for dirty energy when we can pay for less for less than, for clean energy. I believe if we could pay less to own something, it's better than paying more to rent it. And I'm nodding this whole time. And then now they start to agree, which is minor agreements. Then I cover the major questions, roof move, cost, service, savings. Then I go into the design. Then I go into the cost of doing nothing part two. And then I say, um, I'm going to show you how this works. And you tell me if you think it's fair. Do you have any issue with me using it as a reference? Nope. Non-disclosure? Nope. Keeping the shield in the yard? Nope. Flying the drone over the home after the install? Nope. Okay, then the way we compensate you is we pay for all the upfront costs, this, this, and this. And then I fill in the opposite side of the chart. And I compare everything apples to apples. And the solar side always is better. And the only way that they would want to continue paying the utility company is if they wanted to justify a way to throw away their money. I assume the sale, I seed, I involve, I tell. At that point of the process, I don't even ask them if they want to do it. 
At that point in the process, I say, okay, the next step is I said to verify you are on the deed of the home. You guys aren't wanted burglars. You haven't killed anybody. You don't have any arrest warrants in North Dakota, nothing like that. No bankruptcies over the last 12 months. Okay, perfect. We're also going to verify, you know, you have decent credit. And as long as you have decent credit, um, then we put you in the line. But if everything that I told to you was exactly the way that it is, absolutely no more, no less, exactly like it is on this piece of paper, do you feel as if you would lean a little bit more towards the right than the left? Well, guess what? Everything that I told you is exactly how it is. There is no more, there is no less. Authorize the forms and then do a post-close close. Write them a thank you letter. Take a picture with them. You see at the end of the process, when I'm done making the transaction, I always ask them a hypothetical question. I hold the camera and I say, okay, I'm here with Raphael and Raphael, I have one question for you. If I snap my fingers and the solar was already installed on the roof and it was all up there right now and you had the fixed payment of the 145 and you knew you owned that system and you were cooking breakfast and you heard the doorbell ring and you went to go check who it was and it was Edison. And Edison tried to convince you to rip the panels off the roof and go back to your $180 bill and they could raise it at any time. What would you say? Get off my porch, man. Get <laughs> off his porch. You heard Get it here first. Porch, you, here. Know, you, you guys want to know the secret that nobody knows? When secret? I take that video with them of them saying I would never do that, I then take that video and I text it to their cell phone. Mm. They're not canceling after that. And the communication that you have with these families, going back to always giving them way more than they expect. We're running out of time. So these are the five most important things I focus on with this job. Clarity, a confused mind always says no. Repetition, you have to hear, read, write, and say something six times to gain 62% of the retention. Energy, the people with the most energy make the most money. Belief, the attitude, belief, and conviction that you have is stronger than any sort of technical product or technical skills. And then service, genuinely giving a shit and trying to help people. That leads to a dynamic presentation. And I ask you guys this question. The number one most powerful technique in all of selling. What is that? Enthusiasm. Calling yourself. Enthusiasm. Attitude. Enthusiasm is a good guess, but it isn't. The number one technique in all of selling. Belief. Storytelling. Assumption. No. Nope. 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 Honesty. Nope. Nope. Curiosity. Nope. You see, I've asked, I asked this to about 300 door to door sales professionals. Nobody got it. Empathy. No. Nope. Creating curiosity. Nope. When you lose this, you lose the sale every time. Confidence? No, you, you're Con close with the trust. First. Conviction. Harry, the first two letters correct. Conviction. Control. Control. Who said it? Who said My name it? is Jason. Sorry. All right, <laughs> you're, you're getting yourself a deck of cards too. So the number one most powerful technique in selling is control. When you lose control, you lose the sale every single time. You take the command position. When you don't, you lose. You control the presentation to a predetermined decision. When you master these control devices, you will command the attention from the family. You will command the involvement during your presentation. You will command the flow of your presentation. You will command the potential rejection, and you're going to command the emotion. And that's how you create the emotional climate and close with combinations. And that's what will culminate in a final win-win and find the excuses for these families to say yes and for you to be able to take them through the process, lead their hand, and be the assistant buyer throughout the process. So we're coming across an hour. I know I went through a lot. This call has been recorded. I exposed you to information today. It's the first time you guys have ever heard me train. Um, if you notice, this is all a reflex. You can't reflex any sort of ideas, but you can reflex the words. You see, when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, I was always the guy in the front row taking notes. You, that's like eating spaghetti with a spoon. You're going to get a lot on you, but not a lot in you. And me just exposing you to this information, you might be like, wow, he knew his stuff. He was pretty good at sales. But it's up to you to watch this presentation and watch the recording eight to 10 times. It's up to you to actually start programming this information into your mind. It's up to you to say, hey, this is the year that I'm going to make it. This is the year where, you know, I'm going to get with my support system and I'm going to say, hey, this is the year that we're going to be financially free. Starting from the bottom is not a deficit. It's a gift. You know, I watched my dad get down to his last 10 or 20 bucks. I never had a silver spoon in my mouth. 
but I realized that the decisions I made along the way would decide my wealth. And temporary imbalance is really how you get ahead. For so long, I struggled with that, where I was like, am I giving up too much? Am I sacrificing too much? No, I was perfecting my craft and I was setting up my hobby that happened to be now my career. So you guys have an unbelievable opportunity in the solar industry and, you know, great leaders, you know, that have, you know, uh, brought, uh, you know, this sort of training to you guys. Um, the one thing that I'm asked from you guys, and I'm not here to sell you guys anything. Um, it's very simple. The only thing I ask is give me some support on YouTube. If you guys don't subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's all I ask. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, it's just my name, Taylor McCarthy. Um, we got our next drop happening from Canada. I knocked doors in a, in a foreign country. That was pretty fun. It was negative 25 degrees out. And uh, yeah, I want to, I guess, thank you all for giving me the time today. And I'm very grateful and appreciative of it. Awesome. No, that was Excellent. amazing. Excellent. Wow. Excellent. Taylor, you want to mention uh, Knockstars as well? Yeah, so Knockstar University, the only way that we pay, um, take payment through Knockstar is through the actual link. Um, if you guys made any payments through Knockstar, through any Venmo links or anything, please let me know because that has never went to the business. But if you are interested in Knockstar University as well as Tom Hopkins University, uh, Tom Hopkins has been my mentor and um, he actually has t uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taking over for Tom and, you know, helping actually redevelop a lot of the training. So um, the resources that I would tell you to look into if you're looking to invest and in actually getting better is I would look into Tom Hopkins University. I would look into Knockstar University. I would check out my Instagram, Taylor MCC Solar. Check out the link in my bio on Pillar. You guys can get a lot of things like you guys can download my whole word for word presentation. Um, you guys can actually get these cards on there as well in digital PDF version. Uh, uh, the slicks, these are the ones that I've developed. Uh, Stonecoldtrapper.com is where you can get these. These are probably the best investment that you can make if you're in solar. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I would recommend for you guys, but it's up to you. You know, you've got to be the one that wants to invest in it. Man, that was that was some training. I can tell you that the one thing that I took from you was <clears throat> coming from the bottom is not a deficit, but a gift. That was a powerful, powerful statement. It is, man. And, uh, you know, I think we all are who we are because of our life experience. And I also am a firm believer that nothing happens by accident. I think that everything happens for a reason. Um, all of you guys had the ability to miss this call. All of you had the ability to find an excuse to do something else. Uh, but all of you guys are on here for a reason. And, you know, you're you're working on becoming the best version of yourself. And that's really all it is. You, you guys all work for yourself. You don't work for anybody else but yourself. And the harder that you work on yourself, the better that you are going to be in your profession. Hey, Tyler, how do you how does it look for each of us? to take this presentation, your words and your style and create our own style around it. You know, I mean, we're all not going to be you. I'm, I'm 61 years old. I've got a way different life experience than you probably had. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, like I'm just wanted to get a little idea of how that might look, you know? <clears throat> so like I mentioned, you know, the ad if you want to take the concepts, you want to take the attitude, the belief, the conviction, those steps or those checkpoints that I gave you, that's a, that's that can work with anything. You just have to match your style, you okay. know, like affirmation on telling yourself or incantations before knocking or talking to yourself in the third person. It might sound silly, but it's like self-talk. It's the power of the brain right here. It's it's 15, 16 years of, of of affirmations. There's times where things have gotten tough for me. Uh, but like I said, maintaining is exhausting. Building is energizing. How do you last for decades in an industry? It's having fun. And that's the secret ingredient. And then, you know, if you watch the recording and break down those steps that I broke down for you, you can see that, you know, what you need to do is tell a story. And if you don't tell a story to create a pain, there's never going to be a change. And then through creating that pain, what you want to do is you want to come up with a solution like that's a very uh, transferable to whatever way that you present. And, you know, I think that if you find somebody's presentation that you like, 
what you should do is you should actually write out your own presentation word for word. It might take five, six hours to listen to somebody's audio, pause it, rewind it, write it down. But those are the type of things that professionals have to do to be professional. The common word with any prop professional is practicing. Lawyers call their office their practice. The common word with any professional is practicing professional. Like I asked you before, what is a salesperson? You can take all the professional athletes, the doctors, the dentists, the lawyers, all of them, and put them in one group and then put the sales professionals over here. The sales professionals out earn all the people, all the other professionals combined. And what's crazy is if you wanted to be a heart surgeon, could you graduate high school and go to the hospital and be a heart surgeon? Yeah. What would you have to do to be a heart surgeon? What would you have to Practice do? Practice and learn and study. Years, years, of, only. years of study. What do you have to do first? You need to go to, starts with a C. College. college. How many years do you have to go to college? Four. Eight. Four. Well, eight. You have to go like eight years yeah. to college. Yeah. After the eight years of college, can you graduate the eight years and right away be a heart surgeon? No. no. Four. no. You four probably years. have five years of residency. Yeah. Well, those five years of residency, they're making like three, four hundred grand a year, right? <laughs> No. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> no, no. So they no, spent nine right. years of sacrifice to wait to get the professional contract so they can be a heart surgeon. What about the athletes that spend years in the gym? This training right here for the sales professional is the weight room for the athlete. But the athlete will spend decade in the gym and he might not even get the professional contract. You all have a professional contract sitting right in front of you. You guys got to tell other people, hey, this is what I'm worth and I'm going to go prove it to you. But it just comes down to your decisions deciding your wealth. And, you know, to the other gentleman's question, for me, I would find somebody that you want to emulate and I would copy them. That's good. You find three people, one person you want to emulate and be like, one person you compete with on a day to day basis and one person that you're mentoring. And if you guys have ever taken somebody brand new on the doors, you guys probably sell better when you have somebody brand new with you. And that's just how it works. Thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> what was your Instagram again? Taylor MCC Solar. T-A-Y-L-O-R MCC Solar. And then my YouTube is just under my name. Just followed you on Instagram. Thanks, bro. Uh, I appreciate that. And what made you want to do YouTube? Let me ask you. Like, out of all, you know, like, you didn't do it for a long time, and it's a very big thing. We all thought about it for years, but it's been a very big thing to be that exposed and open with your profession and your hobby, and to expose everything you're doing, and you know, shine light on a beautiful part of our career. So I was yep. curious, like, what made you take that extra risk and extra pressure on yourself to create something so different um, and put yourself in the position? Tom Hopkins told me something. He said the next level of teaching sales is performing sales. And validity was always something so important to me. I would see all these people become sales trainers. And I was like, dude, you know what I mean? That kid, that kid was number 20 in the company, not number one. And he doesn't have no trophies to prove it. So I said, hey, I'm going to be the one that takes the camera out in the doors. And, you know, I go on these blitzes. I don't know where I'm going. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in last week, I was in New Mexico. They just I went to a random neighborhood and, you know, we we had four uh, four transactions in the two days that we were there. So uh, it doesn't matter where I go. It's just, I have the deep down belief that you guys are literally giving away free money out there. That's what your job is. You, you're giving away thousands of dollars to families and you're getting paid thousands of dollars to do it. And you're in a service based industry that you can genuinely help people. Like when people tell me no, I know that that's when my job starts. When they tell me no three or four times, that's when it gets more serious. I, I need to find the excuse for them to say yes. Otherwise, they're going to get screwed in, from the utility company forever. Because if they don't do it through me, then um, they may never do it. Because it's just something that is going to be the pebble in their shoe that they just walk around with forever. When are you coming back to Vegas? We're, 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 we're shooting for 100, uh, 100 blitzes in 2023, so you'll see me all over the country. We're going to be all out in, in neighborhoods. 
It's funny. Sure. We had a, we knocked on it. She's like, I saw you on YouTube and a lady that I knocked and saw me on YouTube before I even knew it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, YouTube's pretty cool, man. I mean, I only started like a year. I only have like 40 videos, but you know, quality over everything. We're only going to put out the best stuff. And I'm telling you, Hey, Carlos, I, I see you on, I see you on your iPhone. If you have a question to ask the legend, you introduced me to him about two weeks ago. They can't stop talking about you. I see him. He's he's only 18. So shoot it. This is your chance. Young hustler. Love it. He's been knocking doors. He's been knocking all summer. They got like two deals, but they never stopped straight out of high school. Let's go. So we get a lot of not interested at the doors. And um, we get to the point where we just want to like give up. Like we just literally want to give up because we just we just keep getting those. And uh, I've been watching your videos, trying to get all the nuggets out of it, see what see what we can learn and input into our day to day door to doors. But um, a lot of the results aren't showing up, and it's just a lot of de demotivation. So, like, what do you do to just keep moving forward and keep pushing on the doors? And this hand is demotivators, and this hand is motivators. Things that motivate us are money, recognition, achievement. Things that demotivate us are self doubt, uh, questioning ourselves. You know, if you're getting a lot of not interested, it comes down to the fact that you're not creating curiosity. The first thing I would tell you is you need to have these slicks on the doors. You need them in a certain order and you need to be able to put things in people's hands. Buying is not a spectator sport. It's an involvement sport. I need to involve as many of their senses as possible. I need to take them on a field trip out to their meter. I need to show them the back of their roof. I would download the app on the app store called Knock Buddy. It's the app that I use when I show them the app right off the bat. So when I knock on the door, I pull up their house. I have the app pulled up and, you know, I'll literally show them where the sun hits their house. So I'll knock on the door. Sometimes if people are like real quick with me, I'll be like, hey, I'll cut to the chase. This is 671, correct? This is you guys. Cool. We had some aerial imagery done. As you can see, the yellow, the whole backside of your house just gets absolutely crushed in sun. Um, I'm not here to sell you guys anything. I know it's a heartbreaker. I know you really wanted to buy a new vacuum cleaner today. Uh, to cut to the chase, uh, all these families that put up all the windmills, the solar, they did not win the lottery. They didn't take money out of their checking account. What's happening is a lot of these families are starting to realize all the money they're just throwing away to the utility company. They could actually start paying themselves through equity. Okay. These people did not win the lottery, like I mentioned, and then I go into the presentation, but you really need to be able to put something in their hand or show them something. So the thing I like about the app knock buddy on the app store is there's no monthly subscriptions. It's just a one time 20 bucks and then you're done paying for it forever. And I use it on every door. It's the first thing I show them. I pinned to my location. I have the yellow crosshairs going over the house. I zoom in and I change the time to show them exactly where the sun hits the house. Because now they're like, oh, they already got a design ready for me. I tell them the design's 95% of the way complete. All I need is the usage. And then my lead engineer finishes the design and I show them what it looks like. Now they're more curious to see what it looks like. And they allow me to transition into the home. I'm just trying to take it as far as I possibly can every single time. And a lot of the time I'll get past that breaking point where they start listening to me and, you know, I make this make sense. But if you're getting not interested, like when people tell me not interested on the door, I laugh at them. Like if you were to say not interested, it kind of goes like this. <laughs> of course, sir, of course, you don't want to buy anything, right? Cool. This is a little bit different. And then I just keep going. That's it. And uh, the other thing I would tell you is record yourself on the doors and listen to it the same way that a professional athlete watches footage of themselves. If they throw three picks in a game, they're going to figure out, dude, why does the safety keep picking me off? Oh, dude, I'm not picking up the read here. OK, next game, I'm not throwing it to number 30. I'm throwing it across to number 81. Do you do in-person sales trainings for companies still? Like yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. How do you how do you look into those? Uh just, just send me a, send me a DM, Taylor oh, MC. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You guys are crushed in sun. The sun goes up, the bills go down. That's a good not another good one. Sun goes up, bills go down. Any no, other they're... specific objections or anything that you guys are dealing with? Uh actually I had a pretty 
interesting one after a couple months. I had a uh, objection of a homeowner who at the very end was going to do like a refi or something like that, like, you know, post sale. Um, I don't know, I'm curious how you handle something like that when they want to like, you know, pull money out and stuff. If that's complicated or, you know. Yeah, typically when they have those type of situations, like if they're like, hey, give me a couple days, I just want to think this over, or let me sleep on it. You know, I use something called stimulus pause response and I'll look at them and I'll kind of respond like this, like, you know, Raphael, I'm going to be very blunt with you. That's another thing. Stop saying to be honest. Don't say to be honest, say to be blunt. So I'll be like, Raphael, I'll be very blunt with you. Typically, when I get this far into the presentation, deep down, people do know what they want to do. But what happens is people tend to make this a much bigger decision than it really is. Now, if everything that I've explained to you on this piece of paper is exactly the way that it is, that you would shift from a liability to an asset, go from consuming to producing, go from renting to owning, and that you would not pay a penny out of pocket and you would own this thing outright, do you think you would lean a little bit more towards the right or the left? Well, guess what? Everything I said is exactly how it is. There is no more. There is no less. The next step is I am going to actually submit your applications. I'm going to do yours on Tuesday. And so I start assuming, seeing, involving, and telling. And those are the four things that I do when I have any sort of resistance at the end. Yes, I'm running into some bumps. Um, when you get to a a new move in, you know, where they don't have a history of the bill. I actually, I'm kind of dealing with a uh, a lady with that, uh, like right now, she's saw the stickers and say, oh, I see the sticker shot of 42,000. Normally if we have that historical bill, we can kind of crush that. But if you don't have that, then it's, uh, how would you handle that in that situation? So I always cradle the gross cost with what the cost of doing nothing is. So if it's a $47,000 utility loan, right. I always refer to it as a utility loan too, because some people try to say the funding or they try to hide that it's a loan. You don't hide that it's a loan because then it's going to end up canceling after you leave. So I refer to it as a utility loan. And what I have is I break down the left side here, say if this number is 74,000 and this number is 47,000, I say, ultimately, it comes down to whether or not you want to donate the $74,000 to the utility company and continue being at the mercy of the power company or actually paying yourself 47241 and putting it back into the equity of the home. The bottom line is there is a cost of doing nothing because you saying no to the utility company is saying yes to going solar and you saying yes to going solar is saying no to the utility company. And then what I did on this sheet is I added all this fine print. And what the fine print says is if involved with this project, we reserve the right to disqualify this location due to shading structure and or permitting. The utility company reserves the right to disqualify due to current infrastructure. If you're not included with the selection process, you will remain with the current utility provider. So I have takeaways within that process. But when I deal with people that have low months usage, um, you know, you want to either look at the square footage of the home or you want to look at, you know, I, a really good question is what is the envisionment that you have for the home? If they're planning on getting a Tesla, if they plan on getting a hot tub, if they have kids that are moving in, kids that are moving out, you know, you want to factor that all in. And, you know, what I like to do is I like to get them in line. And, you know, sometimes it's a 60 day process before their install. And within that process, if they get a new utility bill or something changes, we can always add or take away from the system. All right. OK, but what I'm saying is, though, they don't have a history at all. So, you know, because they just moved in. She's only been there a month. So she doesn't have a, a bill history, you know, so I could, that I could uh, tap into. So I got to kind of, I did the calculations, like you said, your square footage, time to number. You, you, you got to do a generic system at that point. You know, right. if a generic based, hey, this is a, a normal eight kilowatt or whatever it is based on the people in that area. And, you know, that's what you got to do or you've got to wait until they get more, more usage. Right. Yeah, because I have nothing to compare it to. Well, she has the sticker shock of 42000 but I can only tell her, you know, that I can guarantee you if this is 42000 you paying uh, your electric bill is going to be 74000 So, but that's just my word that I'm giving her. If I had that history, then it would show it, like you said, in the, you know, uh, before and after or whatever you want to call it. 
but uh, that's kind of what I'm kind of dealing with in this company. So I go back more to concepts. And what I mean by that is like, you know, say if I was sitting down with you and you were the family that I was helping, you know, like, um, what was your first name? Uh, Alan. I'm sorry. Alan. So Alan, I have a hypothetical question for you, and this is going to require a little bit of thought on your end. But if I pulled a checkbook out of my pocket right now, and I was real willing to write you a check because I wanted to become the owner of this house. You can continue living here. You just need to start writing me a check every single month and I would become the landlord. Is that something you would do? <laughs> right. Yeah. Would you no. do that? No. Why that's wouldn't not, you do that? That's not good. Why, why would I want to do that? Right, exactly. You see, Judy, she was a little dramatic. She's the lady that lives on the corner that put up the solar about six months ago. Um, but what she told me was the utility company was like her energy lord, kind of like having a landlord. And I take it the reason that you bought this home was because you wanted ownership. Now, before you own this home, did you guys rent a home before this? Correct. So the question I would ask you is, like, like let me ask you this question. <laughs> you ready for some heat right now? They can't get away from this one. So let me ask you this, Alan. What, when did you move into the house? Oh, about a month ago. 30 days ago. So I don't know yeah. if you moved the furniture in yourself or somebody else did it. Didn't really, it doesn't really matter. But that first day when you moved in, most people call the utility company and they say, hey, can you turn on my electricity? At that point, when you called the utility company, if they would have told to you, hey, before we turn on the power, we need to send a representative out to your house. And he's going to lay out two options for you. Option one, we can raise your rate at any time and you have to rent power from us forever. The second option would give you complete ownership, true ownership of your power. We would give you a fixed amount that would be lower than the rental model. And eventually you'd have an end game. If they were to lay out that option for you a month ago and told you they needed to send a representative out to your house to lay out both options, fair to say you would look at both of them, right? That's correct. The only difference is I don't have an Edison logo on my shirt. Okay. I can see that. That's it? Right. Or I can see so that. I, I'm posing the question that hypothetically, when they called their power company, if they labeled two options and they needed to send a representative out to their house to help them with that, nobody's doing option A. It's the same idea that if I was sitting here trying to convince you to rip the panels off the house and go back to renting, or if I was trying to convince you to sell your house to me right now and go back to being a renter, you wouldn't do that. So right. I'm going back to the concepts of ownership rather than going into, hey, you have three months, six months, eight months. You wait two or three months for a bill and then all the rates go up and the pricing changes. It doesn't really matter. You know, you want to put your reservation in and I'm yep. here to put that reservation in for you. Right. I kind of tell everyone that when they run into this sticker shop thing is that the only reason why you don't have sticker shop with your utility company, because it's chopped up into little bitty pieces. And so when you have to put it out up front, if you're paying cash or so, you know, then that's when it becomes a sticker shop. But if you take all of those little bitty bills and add them together, it's normally double of the uh, price that you're going to pay cash for the solar system. I, I I don't hide the loan amount. I apologize for it. Hey, I apologize. The, the total loan amount was only $68,000. Um, you know, typically, if we could have made it the maximum amount, which is $150, you are setting up like your own S-corp on your roof, where you now own your own business, almost like you're actually putting the mercy of the power company at, uh, um, at your will. Obviously, it depends. Some places you can only design systems up to 100%. Some places you can design a system to 250%. So, you know, obviously check with your market and what you can do there. But uh, I think the, the biggest lesson that you guys should take from today's training is, you know, it's a deep down attitude, belief and conviction that's going to allow you to create these decisions and create that emotional climate. And the more that you understand the benefit and the advantage that a homeowner is going to have by owning their electricity and paying themselves rather than just throwing their money in a trash can, you know, that's what's going to allow you to, you know, persuade and communicate effectively as far as door-to-door -door sales professionals. So um, I know that we've went a little bit over. I didn't even look. We've been going for an hour and a half. I just sometimes just go on rant sometimes, but 
Um, I guess from you guys, just from you guys, what are the takeaways, your instant takeaways that you guys had um, over the course of the last hour and 20 minutes that we spent together? Man, you made it very, very simple. It's not about the mechanics. It's really about common sense. It's really about common sense. Um, In a lot of this industry, because it is a constant, never ending, changing environment, right? We're always innovating new technology, new everything. We tend to get stuck with the latest and most newest uh, equipment, but in reality, it, it comes down to common sense. And even though it's it's very simple, it's not easy. And simplicity in the way you do it. I mean, you, the whole it, it, the statement, uh, uh, the intent to proceed with your statement that you do at the beginning literally closes everything from that point forward. I, I just loved it. This is very... Uh, nonchalant it's like it's it's a no-brainer it Thank is you. And, and you guys can watch my full entire sales process on the doors or closing on my youtube channel there's literally from beginning to end through an entire close uh beginning to end through an entire uh sales process from knock to install so you know i really appreciate that tyler i know you've been on a little bit over but i did have my hand up for a quick question yeah um how do you handle a client when it's not a hundred percent off offset when it's only like a 50% offset for that customer? Do you just skip them or what is your comeback oh. in explaining? I mean, I mean, even a 20% offset's better than 0% offset because they own 20% of their power and 20% of their electric bill. They're no longer at the mercy of the power company for. So what I say is we're going to do one of two things. We're going to either completely fill up your roof with panels, or we're going to get you 100% of your power coming from the sun. Notice what I just said there. We're either going to completely fill up your roof with panels, or we're going to get you 100% of your power coming from the sun. So somebody that has a 50% offset, right now, 100% of their power like one of the great tag on statements that I've I never had somebody disagree with this statement is, you know, maybe I'll be combining excuses for them to say yes. And then I'll hit them with. And I think we can both agree if you guys move, the utility company is not going to give you any of that money back. They're keeping it. And they're always like, oh, yeah, I agree. So let's say you average two hundred dollars to the utility company. That's twenty four hundred dollars a year that you're throwing away into the trash can. Would you rather throw away twenty four hundred dollars into the trash can or protect yourself from fifty percent of that and of 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 that? So, like, I would just break it down to the ridiculous on this piece of paper. Hey, right now, fifty percent of your power. If they had fifty percent, this is what you're going to pay for that extra fifty percent, or it's going to be this situation. Like, I'm not a rocket scientist. All I do is I put a line down the middle of a piece of paper and I show them the left and I show them the right. And everything on this piece of paper is the same thing that gets emailed to them. It's people overcomplicate it. It's not that big of a deal. Like, you know, this is just a new way to power their home. You can ask them a stupid question. Sir, if you pulled out of your neighborhood and there was a big giant billboard lit up with neon sight signs, and it said, there's a brand new utility company that opened up in Pepperell. Are you going to look into it? Yes. People are going to look into it. Bottom line, you fall into one or two categories. Either everything makes sense or sounds way too good to be true. And you're probably sitting there like, what's the catch? The catch is simple. Why'd you pick blank as your provider? They're America's last monopoly. These people are at the mercy of the power company. It's your job to go save them. Don't be selfish. Go out and learn the, the, the skills and the abilities to set up your income for your family, for the people that you love, for the people that had to work for 10, 15 bucks an hour their whole life. You guys can make the decision right now. Hey, I'm worth three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in two hundred in twenty twenty three. I'm a five hundred thousand dollar a year earner. I'm gonna go prove that to people. I'm gonna put my last name on my back and I'm gonna show them what I'm made of. Risk is the down payment for success. You commit now and you figure it out later. Hey, can I just like one quick comment and I'll be my last one? Yeah. Um, most people don't notice this, but I love the fact that you never wear a uniform, something I've been doing for years. You're always in some something colorful and just like being you. And it's 
I'm just curious in your philosophy on that because so many companies and people are so strict on that mindset, but being outside the box always seems to attract the right people to your, into your orbit. So I'm just curious, like where you come from in that stance with just your own branding and just being you. Colors affect people. If you guys notice, I pick my button all the way to the top. Like I have my own unique style. You know, when I'm knocking and it's kind of cold out, I take my jacket off and I wrap it around my waist. So I look like a nerd out there. Like, dude, nobody's going to be scared of a kid with a jacket wrapped around his waist when he's coming to knock on your door with a big binder, you know? And uh, for me, it's just, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be identified as, oh, it's a door-to-door -door salesman or, hey, it's a solar guy. Like I have solar on my shirt right off the bat and they're like, oh, it's solar. And they categorize me with the last nine guys because what I'm doing is completely different. Do you teach that to your own guys too? I mean, it's everyone's personal, uh, everyone's personal, whatever they feel comfortable in. You know, I wouldn't suggest saying, hey, don't or do. I would just say, you know, find your style and be comfortable in what you what you knock in. You know, because also it's like if I don't feel good about the what I'm wearing or I don't feel good, like I used to wear these crazy socks and I still do. I'd wear these crazy socks. And right before I went into the final clothes, I would say, Judy, I have one last question. The company does require us to ask it. It is sort of a heavy question, but um, we are required to. On a scale from one to 10, and if you had to break it down to decimal points, you definitely could. Um, but what would you guys rate my socks? And I would hold up my foot and they'd be like, oh my gosh, that's a 9.8. And they'd start laughing. And we're like laughing. And then like three seconds later, I'd usually do my final closing question and go and run the credit because going back to the greatest enemies, the client's fear, I need to be able to help them relax. And I need to make this an experience. I need to be the assistant buyer throughout that process. Anyone I think the I think the approach of uh, not wearing the uniform is, is probably a good one. Uh, I haven't tried that one yet, but it's that way uh, they're not looking through the peephole and either not opening the door at all if they see you know so and so solar company, uh, or uh, they see solar and they they start with the dismissal and then you're having to overcome the objection right off the bat. You just want to you, you just want to be the professional. You want to be the expert advisor that these people look towards when they're making the decision because then they're going to be comfortable with doing business with you. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having me guys and don't hesitate to reach out and uh you know whether whatever you guys believe in spiritually, I'm a firm believer that God put me here for a reason and I'm here to help others. And, you know, that's what I this is my hobby. It's not work for me. So it's 1030 at night over where I'm at and I'm having fun, uh, you know, talking with you guys. Did you already give away that third deck? That yeah, third deck. Three okay, so well, he, here's going to be the question. Oh, here's man, I thought I was going to get it for asking the question. Here's going to be the question for the third deck. Um the third deck is going to be, I said that there's five things that are more important than anything else in my presentation. Does anybody remember what those five things were? There's five things. That the clarity, repetition, energy, belief, service. Boom. Got it. Who's that? Uh, Kevin. Kevin, you got yourself a nice deck coming your way. So um, what I'll do is I'll talk to Anthony. He'll I'll probably send all three of them to him and he can uh, send them out to you guys. Um, if that works for you, Anthony, make it easy on me. Yeah, that'll work. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, thank you guys for hopping in. Thank you to everybody on the Instagram live and uh, Hope you guys got some nuggets today. And like I said, um, stop checking the Facebook and start facing the checkbook because uh, Operation Go Go Gadget Bank Account is going to happen for certain people, just whether or not you decide to make it a part of yours. Hey, Taylor, can I ask you something? Yes, sir. Hey, um, what I wanted to say, uh, you are like one of my idols, man. Thank you so much. You got me out of the worst situation of my life last year. I was watching your YouTube videos. I went from having no money to making $10,000 in one month. Um, have you ever had 
um, have you ever signed up a client and then went to the neighbor and been like, hey, I signed up uh, Jennifer next door. She's super stoked. And the neighbor be really anti-solar. And then the neighbor go and talk to the person you signed up. And then miraculously, three days later, they cancel. So I would never say, hey, I signed up blank. I'd always say, hey, I was able to help a lot of the families get involved um, with solar out here. We've had a ton of inquiries. And, you know, if that person is upset about it, you know, you've got to do good post close close and make them feel comfortable. You know, like I said, the greatest enemy is the client's fear. If you leave that house and like I ask certain test questions like, so how are you guys feeling about all this so far? Nice. Are you guys pretty excited? If they're not, if they're not like, yeah, I'm excited. I feel good about this. Then it's going to cancel. You needed to spend more time uh, during the close. Obviously that's tough where you have a, a neighbor that walks over and potentially blurs their vision on why it makes sense. Yeah. But I also like to bring that up in the house. I like to bring that up. Like um, when I ask them, are they pretty excited? I'll say, now, let me ask you, you know, if you talk to one of a uh, random person and one of the families told you that it wouldn't make sense to go solar, what would you tell them? And then I get them to tell me on the table, well, I wouldn't tell them. I would tell them that it makes sense because I get to own my power. I have the peace of mind behind protecting the rate. So I'm bringing it up beforehand to get ahead of so it. They already, they already have the response ready when whoever comes to fuck up the deal. And yeah. you're, you know what? You're right. That was my bad. I should have never uh, told you know, when you're talking about uh, huge amounts of money like that, you should never just tell people like, hey, this happened. You know, that's very that's kind of private, honestly, when somebody goes solar. But I was watching your YouTube videos and you were really open and honest. And I thought, well, maybe if I like tell the neighbors that, that you know, these people went solar, that, that will make them want to go solar. But it turns out that this guy was like really anti-solar. So that was like my bad luck, I guess. Why is he anti? Why is he anti-solar, bro? What does he worship the devil or something? I mean, come on, sun goes up. It's free energy, man. I don't know. I gotta send you. Uh, I gotta send you some uh, uh, stuff that I've taken on my phone. I've had people chase me down the street too, man. And I know that that's hey, illegal, but it's hostile crazy people crazy. turn me on, dude. I love hostile people. They amuse me. Rejection <laughs> turns me on. I love hostile people. That's the that's energy that I love, man. That's what right I. I seen your video when you got uh you got chased by that guy who kept following you and it was the the next person's uh ended up agreeing to solar and she was the one like hey go kick rocks go back to your home that was that was pretty cool. Yep, we just gotta have fun with it. So Taylor, real quick, so my little brother Ashton is on the call and he's going through Knockstar. So any advice, any anything you want to tell him as he continues his university training? Yeah, the big thing with the university, man, is you want to be able to uh, be able to take notes and actually apply the stuff that you have. So not only going through the courses, but actually taking notes and planning out your presentation. Um, somebody else also asked in the comments, do I sell leases and PPAs? My first four years, all I did was PPAs. Um, the market that I'm in now in, the, in Florida, it's, we don't have PPAs and the ownership just makes more sense than the lease. But within the training university, you've got to be willing to stay committed to it. Um, like I said, the problem is too many people are interested and in not too many people are actually committed. So stay committed to it. And, you know, I think that if you guys can, uh, you know, just understand that you get momentum on your side early in the year and you're already starting it by being on this call. So now the next step is just saying, hey, I'm going to go rip and you literally are professional trick-or-treaters. And, um, you know, I know all of you guys don't do all of your sales through door-to-door. -door. Some of you guys do leads and certain things, but like, you know, it's like we had one group within our Knockstar United group that did 57 accounts with six people last week. A six-man team did 57 accounts and it was all through door knocking. So there's a lot of meat out there for you to go out and take. Just how much of it do you want? Do you, how do you decide which area to door knock if you make that determination? To be honest, I just get dropped off wherever and I can get sales pretty much anywhere. I mean, obviously, I don't like renters. I don't like, you know, certain things, but like I deal with it. But 
for me, I choose if I was in a competition, I would strategically work main roads. I would work dead ends. I would work areas that are away from other areas. I would look for dirt roads. I would look for houses with no garages because I want to be putting myself in front of as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the way that I strategize when I'm out there. Well, no one else has anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. And uh, looking forward to connecting with you guys. One of the best parts about doing training and sales is all the relationships and the people I got to meet. And, you know, I've met a lot of lifelong friends through this. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you guys and, uh, you know, just going to keep on keeping on. That's what it's all about. You got to sell yourself on selling and make this a big game. Real quick, will you be at Door to Door Con or SolarCon? Yep, uh, I should be at both. Okay. That's you door to door cons, what January 20 something? End of January, uh huh. End of January, and then yep. solar cons, April, I believe. Yep. Salt Lake City, Utah. Awesome. See you guys there. Awesome, awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. you. Appreciate everyone being on the call. Thank you guys. Thank you so thank much. You. Anthony, thank you. Yeah, no problem, brother. Appreciate it. Right, thank you, Taylor. You're a legend. <laughs> You guys have a good night. All right, bro. Good to see you, man. Yep, you too, Alan.